towards this crisis, uh, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources, has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur uh, hi, population. Uh, it could easily uh, rock it forward in, in uh, progress and prosperity and stability. Be so because of that, the uh, United States is greatly United concerned States. with, uh, with events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, I, as I said, we all know the history. We all know where this is coming from. And the Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first-class citizens. And there is a sense that they feel like, and they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. It is, uh, it is up to dialogue and to dialogue to move this process forward. There's tremendous interest within all branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis. Uh, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources, has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur uh, population. It could easily uh, rock it forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So. Because of that, the uh, United States is greatly concerned with, uh, with events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, I, as I said, we all know the history. We all know where this is coming from. And the Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first-class citizens. And there is a sense that they feel like and they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. It is, uh, it is up to dialogue and to dialogue to move this process forward. There is tremendous interest within all branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis. Um, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources, has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur po population. It could easily uh, rock it forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So because of that, the uh, United States is greatly concerned with, uh, with events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, uh, as I said, we all know the history, you know, we all know where this uh, is coming from, and the Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first-class citizens, and there is a sense that they feel like, and they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. It is, uh, it is up to dialogue and true dialogue to move this process forward. There's tremendous interest within all uh, branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis, uh, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources, has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur population. It could easily uh, rock it forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So. Because of that, the uh, United States is greatly concerned with, uh, with events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, I, as I said, we all know the history. We all know where this is coming from. And the Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first-class citizens. And there is a sense that they feel like, and they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. It is... Uh, it is up to dialogue and true dialogue to move this process forward. There's tremendous interest within all uh, branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis. Uh, so, the United States is greatly I concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. You, uh, I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. Uh, but, we consider uh, it uh, essential for the stability day, but, uh, in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. But, uh, it has uh, uh, phenomenal natural resources has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur po population. It could easily uh, rock it forward in, in progress and 
prosperity and stability. So that because was of that, the U.S. Uh, United States is greatly concerned with, uh, about with events there. The people of and uh, the frustrating thing because is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, I, as I said, we all know the history, we all know where this is coming from, and the Anglophone population of Cameroon you know, are very much we, like to I mean, be considered I as first-class citizens, and there is a sense that they feel like they have Latin felt a long time that they're second-class citizens. Cameroon, it is, you know, uh, it is up you know, to dialogue and true dialogue to move this process forward. I have been speaking There's tremendous that interest within all the branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis. The, of the, of uh, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. The I mean, of we the consider Saudi Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, to essential for like stability like in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. And both of you it has uh, together. phenomenal that natural make resources. It has a highly educated, industrious entrepreneur oh, no. you know, population, so, it could easily uh, rock for some it forward reason, in, in that progress and we are prosperity and stability, so of because of that, uh, and that United is why States we want to clarify that difference, with, uh, with events there. That and the, people uh, the frustrating of South thing is, a lot of this uh, was needless, it, as, as they I deserve said, their we all know the history, we they all know to where this is their own from, internal affairs. the Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first-class citizens. Their own independence, that they like, and, they and that is why they, like they should be able to, able to is, uh, deal with their own identity. It is up to dialogue and but unfortunately, this process forward. We find our brothers and There's sisters being massacred by the public to Cameroon, and our parents, uh, our grandmothers, crisis. and the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it a essential for the stability in that region of, of but Africa. But I am here As to present this to the citizens potential. of this wonderful it has, nation, uh, the United States. It has phenomenal natural resources, has a highly educated, industrious, uh, the United entrepreneur States has been very population. vocal. It could easily uh, no rocket forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So about because of that, the uh, United background. States is greatly concerned with uh, We the have to we get into this and, mess. Uh, the frustrating we thing is a lot of this uh, because uh, of the needless. British government. It, as, as the I said, British government undermined the value and the dignity of the people the of South Cameroon. And Jews, like the Nebori country, Lan Republic of Cameroon. And, Cameroon, and that is why we like are in this mess. Because of the British government undermined the value and the dignity of the people of South Cameroon. Who are more efficient in managing the government affairs? It who is, is up to more dialogue efficient and true dialogue the people of Saudi Cameroon? They have There's tremendous interest within all uh, branches of, of the U.S. government towards this crisis. But unfortunately, uh, the United States has. is greatly Let's concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, for we consider affairs, Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it in France, uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources, has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur population. It could easily uh, rocket forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So because of that, the uh, United States is greatly concerned with, uh, with events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, as I said, we all know the history. We all know where this is coming from. and. The I want to clarify the understanding of the much like to be It is not the Anglophone problem. And it's it because the British like government, the British, British government, their second class citizens. Let's out in this it mess. Is, uh, it's not just it is up the Anglophone problem. It's because the British process. government. Place the There's people of South Africa in this mess. In 1960, when the United Nations vote, well, that the United was voted, States is greatly I concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, when the same vote was carried out. Why did the British Africa, government we all know choose Cameroon option and three potential. and place has, us in this uh, mess? Natural resources. We have an effective and, and more efficient government uh, than La Republic du Cameroon. La Republic du Cameroon, du Cameroon easily, uh, has never in forward in, historically in shown and that they so have because of that, uh, United uh, States is greatly concerned with, uh, with organized a meaningful and election. The frustrating thing is a lot of this of uh, was needless. You have one brutal dictatorship. We know the history, we all know to where the this is coming from. The Anglophone population of the Cameroon is very that is much like to be considered as first-class citizens. And there is a sense that they feel like they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. It is uh, 
To be honest with you, the current president, president of La Republic or the intern or acting president of La Republic is the wife, Shantyamia. Towards this crisis. The wife is um, the, Shanta, States the States current is president of Latin America because he's mentally incapacitated. We consider Cameroon a long term friend. We Phobia consider it the Phobia. essential. And the, the wife is acting as the president of, of the Democratic Republic of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has and tremendous then let's potential. listen to the other secretary for African affairs. Natural resources. The people of Southern Cameroon should have been in this mess. Should the British government make the right judgment and recognize that the people of Southern Cameroon, that they were under and stability 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 because of that, the uh, United States them. is greatly concerned they with the United States. They should have been left States. alone and allowed them to deserve the frustrating and thing is, a lot of this, uh, How many of our people have been struck? How many of our people have been killed in this is coming present from. Democracy? The Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be of considered as first class citizens. There was a sense that they felt long time. How many? Long time. Like their second class citizens. Because the British it government is, uh, brought us into this mess that we are inherited. And the Latin public can There's tremendous interest in our territory, the whatever they think towards this crisis. Let's look at uh, the, the United States is Latin greatly public concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. Cameroon territory. We consider Cameroon a long term friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability for in that affairs. region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources, has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur po you know, population. It could easily uh, rocket forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So because of that, uh, the United States is greatly concerned with uh, the events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, I, as I said, we all know the history, we I'm all know that is, where that this was is coming uh, from, and uh, the Anglophone population the of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first-class citizens, and there was a sense of that, that they and they have felt lost, let's look at like they're second-class the citizens. Military. It, is, uh, it is up to dialogue and true dialogue to move this process forward. There's tremendous interest within all uh, branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis, uh, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We well, consider it uh, essential there. for the stability in that right. region of, of Africa. <laughs> As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous wow. potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources, has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur po you know, population. It could easily uh, rocket forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So. Because of that, the uh, United States is greatly concerned with, uh, with events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, I, as I said, we all know the history. We all know Hello, where this Cameroon. is coming from. And the Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first-class citizens. And there is a sense that they feel like, and they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. It is... Uh, it is up to dialogue and true dialogue to move this process forward. There's tremendous interest within all uh, branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis. Uh, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur po you know, population. It could easily uh, rocket forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So because of that, uh, the United States is greatly concerned with, uh, with events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, I, as I said, we all know the history. We all know where this is coming from. And the Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first-class citizens, and there is a sense that they feel like, th and they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. It is, uh, it is up to dialogue and true dialogue to move this process forward. Okay. There's tremendous interest within all uh, branches of the U.S. government towards yeah, this crisis. Uh, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources, has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur po you know, population. 
it could easily uh, rocket forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So because of that, uh, the United States is greatly concerned with, uh, with events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, I, as I said, we all know the history. We all know where this is coming from. And the Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first-class citizens. And there is a sense that they feel like, and they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. It is, uh, it is up to dialogue and true dialogue to move this process forward. There's tremendous interest within all branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis. Uh, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources, has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur po uh, population. It could easily uh, rocket forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So because of that, uh, the United States is greatly concerned with, uh, with events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, I, as I said, we all know the history. We all know where this oh, is coming from. Sure. And the Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first-class citizens. And there is a sense that they feel like, and they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. It is, uh, right, it is up to dialogue at, uh... and true dialogue to move this process forward. There's tremendous interest within all uh, branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis. Uh, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources and a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur uh, population. It could but easily anyway, uh, uh, rock it forward in, in have, progress and prosperity and stability. So but because of that, the uh, United uh, States is greatly concerned with, uh, with events there. Her, and uh, uh, the frustrating uh, thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. And, uh, it, as, as I said, we all, we all know, know that the history, uh, the, we all uh, know the previous where this is coming from. The Anglophone population of Cameroon uh, would very much like to was be considered as first-class citizens. The and there was a sense was that they, like, and they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. Our nation's capital it, is, uh, it is up to dialogue and, and yesterday, to dialogue. And yesterday, for some reason, forward. in the court, um, there's tremendous interest within all branches of the U.S. government uh, towards this crisis. See, uh, his the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. The I mean, we consider Cameroon but a long-term friend. We consider about it to refuse. essential that for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As and, we all know, Cameroon has tremendous stood potential. Up and was watching it has what uh, goes, phenomenal you know, natural resources. But, has a highly educated, First of all, industrious, uh, entrepreneur has a competent population. authority it could to easily, judge uh, it's another sovereign nation, in, in progress, the people of Saudi Arabia. Prosperity and stability. So we, because of that, in a cohabiting uh, relationship that we happen with, to be uh, together, doesn't give the like frustrating a legal thing is, a lot of this uh, over the people of Saudi Arabia. It, as, as I said, it did not, we all know the history. We all know in a cohabiting where this is coming from, and La did not the Anglophone population of Cameroon is very much like the people of Saudi Be considered as first-class citizens. There is a sense that they feel like, and they have felt a long time, because of the second terrorists citizens. perpetrated it by is, La uh, Republic in the South. It is up to dialogue and true dialogue to move this process forward. And yesterday, there's tremendous interest within all branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis. Uh, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources, has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur uh, population. It can easily uh, rocket forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So because of that, the United States is greatly concerned with, uh, with events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, I, as I said, we all know the history. We all know where this is coming from. And the Anglophone population of Cameroon is very much like to be considered as first-class citizens. And there is a sense that they feel like, and they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. It is... Uh, 
it is up to dialogue and true dialogue to move this process forward. That is an American. There's tremendous uh, interest uh, within all uh, branches of the U.S. government to towards this crisis. In uh, South the United States is greatly and concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term right. friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources. It has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur po uh, population. It could easily uh, rocket forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So. Because of that, uh, the United States is greatly concerned with, uh, with events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, I, as I said, we all know the history. We all know where this is coming from. And the Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first-class citizens. And there is a sense that they feel like, and they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. It is... Uh, it is up to dialogue and true dialogue to move this process forward. There's tremendous interest within all uh, branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis. Uh, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources. Has a that was a voice from an American observer uh, who happened to be in Batibo. And she speak up from her uh, mind and the experience she encountered uh, with the terrorist so military of La Republic uh, perpetrating an atrocity with, uh, in South Cameroon territory. And uh, Batibo, you all know, is, a lot of this, you all know, uh, you all know. The, the continual as, as said, atrocity. We all know the but history, before we let's all proceed again, I want to give this urgent announcement. The Anglophone population of Cameroon La, would very much like to in Bui, be considered as right first now class citizens. Speaking, and if you are in Bui, like, and they have felt long time, you have to be cautious because the terrorist is, uh, military of La is up to dialogue is in one of some of these areas. And the there's Bui. tremendous interest um, yeah, within all uh, branches and, uh, of the U.S. government yeah, towards Luku this crisis. And, uh, uh, the United States is Kashibu, greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. Well, I mean, but, I we consider that. Cameroon but anyway, if you leave in Bui it, uh, right now that I'm for the speaking, you have to be very cautious because the terrorists of the Republic is going to be terrorizing those areas. If you leave in Bui, as I'm speaking now, so you gotta be very cautious that the terrorist military uh, of is going to be terrorizing and prosperity and, prosperity and, and that's why so if you live in those that, areas, this is very, very important. With, uh, with events there. And, and secondly, uh, the if you live in, is a lot of this, uh, in uh, needless. Barfoot, it, as, if you as live said, in Bafou, yesterday at least 11 people who happened to have been struck by La Republic in Bafou yesterday. So if you live in Bafou, as you get this message, like you have to be very cautious. Class, like they're second class because we are speaking, is, we are spoken. Uh, we have it is up to dialogue and true so dialogue to move this process forward. Obviously, we draw from the South There's tremendous interest within all the branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis. Uh, the because United States when they will come to the moment, Cameron, I mean, we life is going to be destroyed in La Republic. Uh, I am giving this warning that La Republic needs to take precautions. We, we have asked them after time it has, uh, to withdraw from Southern Cameroon and get the heavy heels to this call. Uh, entrepreneur but you know, population. I once gave could easily, uh, public. rocket forward and Gaddafi left and several a few years ago so and because the of that, same uh, announcement was broadcast and told with, uh, Gaddafi to leave. And, uh, but the unfortunately, thing is, Gaddafi did this, not believe uh, was something going to happen. It, as as it I said, we all know the history, we all know where this is coming from. The time the is Anglophone not on population side. of Cameroon would very much like to from this be considered as first class citizens. That La Republic, we have like warned you, we have felt a long time. Gaddafi, second if Gaddafi citizens, knew it is, uh, and predict what's going to happen to him, he would have listened process and process paid close attention and yielded the call. But unfortunately, he believed that when he sees his military, he believed that he had the most best military. And he was well equipped, more than We consider Cameroon a long term friend. We consider. Uh, essential for the stability 
in that region Leave of, of and Africa. Withdraw from we all know Cameroon Cameroon has tremendous Cameroon. potential. That is it has what uh, it's gonna bring up natural it's resources as a highly educated to the last industrious but I have uh, entrepreneur to speak up here population. in this great state of could Texas. easily uh, rocket forward in our our progress and prosperity and stability. So our people were never that, a colonial state we never a conquer territory of land there. And, and yet they find uh, the frustrating in a thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. Because of the lot of public it, as, I, as I said, I we all know the history, we all know where this pull is Pull out your military the out of Saudi Cameroon, of Cameroon would once very more, much like to be a considered as first-class citizens. And there is a sense Our that they people have the right to their self-determination. Like Our people have citizens. the right to their freedom. Is, uh, Our people have the right to decide what they want for themselves and without any precaution. There's tremendous interest within all Imagine the that we were the in US Nigeria in any part of the assembly. Um, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. We, we consider Cameroon a long term friend. We consider it a essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know Cameroon is a tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources, as a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneur uh, population. It could easily uh, rocket forward in, in progress and Let's look at some so of what make up use that, uh, in our modern by a lot of terrorist military and, uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, our was needless. Let's it, watch some as, of as our I said, we all know the history, we explain. all know where this is some coming of from. The Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first class citizens and there is a sense that they feel like and they have felt a long time like they're second class citizens. It is uh, it is up to dialogue and true dialogue to move this process forward. There's tremendous interest within all uh, branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis. Uh, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources, has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneurial population. It could easily uh, rocket forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So because of that, the uh, United States is greatly concerned with, uh, with events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, as I said, we all know the history. We all know where this is coming from. and. The Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first-class citizens. And there is a sense that they feel like, and they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. It is, uh, it is up to dialogue and true dialogue to move this process forward. There's tremendous interest within all branches of the U.S. government towards this crisis. Uh, the United States is greatly concerned with what's going on in Cameroon. I mean, we consider Cameroon a long-term friend. We consider it uh, essential for the stability in that region of, of Africa. As we all know, Cameroon has tremendous potential. It has uh, phenomenal natural resources, has a highly educated, industrious, uh, entrepreneurial population. It could easily uh, rocket forward in, in progress and prosperity and stability. So because of that, the uh, United States is greatly concerned with, uh, with events there. And uh, the frustrating thing is a lot of this uh, was needless. It, as, I, as I said, we all know the history. We all know where this is coming from. And the Anglophone population of Cameroon would very much like to be considered as first-class citizens. And there is a sense that they feel like, and they have felt a long time, like they're second-class citizens. It is. Uh, being terrorized by the neighboring country, La Republic du Cameroon. It is quite devastating that you, we all acknowledge that La Republic is not, La Republic is not part of Southern Cameroon. The fact that we are cohabiting relationship doesn't give La Republic 
to terrorize our people. Our people, we are well intelligent enough. We are educated enough. We don't need the like, public to tell us and how we should be governed. We are capable to decide how we should be governed. The fact that the public has no exhibit any behavior of a mature transfer of power. This particular terrorist individual that is suffering from mental psychosis, Bobia, is suffering from mental psychosis. Of course, it's Betis, the clique that surround him, is the one that is deciding. And the captain on that vessel is the wife, Shantabia. And that is why Shantabia, that was a prostitute that was picked up from the street and amended. And now she is the captain of the ship that is commanding our people, as our grandmother just explained their suffering and their experiences. This is not thing that should have happened in our place. But because the British government brought us into this mess that we have, and that is why they can't even sit and talk about it. They can't even sit and tell, they recognize what the error they made and that they should stand for the dignity of the people of Southern Cameroon. If the children of Southern Cameroon didn't grow enough, to educate enough, to be able to govern themselves, but I am here to let the British government to understand that their sons and daughters have grown to reach their maturity and that they are capable to manage themselves. They do not need land public to tell them what they should do. As our grandmother, I experienced in the midst of the forest being terrorized by land public to Cameroon. Look, look, look some of the images from our grandmother. Look, look some of the images. That is horrifying what is coming up because, I mean, imagine that your own grandmother is having these experiences. I am sure you will be feeling pain and you will be forced to act. And that is why our people did not. We simply invite the public just as we did with the Nigerian government. We never had this worst experience with the Nigerian government. We have a unified relationship and they recognize us as a distinctive people. And when we choose that we no longer be part of Nigeria, Nigeria military did not stage any war over our sovereign people. But the Nigeria recognized our wish and our decisions. You can see. This particular image that I'm about to show is sanitation that women are using leaves of trees. That is sanitation for those in the medical professions. You will imagine that at this era in this century, when technology has been invested, but our own women and children are still having these experiences because of the terrorists perpetrated by the Republic military in Southern Cameroon. I mean, we are well educated enough, we are intelligent enough, we can develop our own research and technology that we are capable to provide all the benefits our people need. We do not, in any circumstances, have the Republic in our midst to detect us what we should and shouldn't do. And that is why I am presenting this case here in this great nation, the United States, to see exactly how women are being dealt with their daily life in the midst of the forest by the terrorist government of the Republic, Pobia regime, that invaded Southern Cameroon and terrorized the place 
because we happen to be in this mess because the British government brought us into this relationship. And that is why our people are suffering, including women, women and children. Let's listen to the experiences that using leaves of trees, just like in the days of the early man. Listen. So, as it is of tea, when you get for your period, that you might need to tell me those days where a match will be. Hey, partner will be. You will take a knife, you grab her, you grab her, fine. Insert and right inside your, your skin. You like it, don't. You do her. Those are sanitations. She's describing how to use leaf in the forest because of the terrorists of La Republic military that is terrorizing our people and that is what she is using leaf. Imagine in the days of the early person, the early man. We all learn in history. So they use my Now forest life this now we will deliver more. Those are women living in a forest because the most brutal is we are women to have a safe environment that they can live and feel comfortable. But unfortunately, with the invasion of the southern Cameroon by the neighboring country, the Republic of Cameroon, and they continue terrorizing our people. And this is the experience that you will watch and see women cooking food in the midst of the forest because some of their homes has been burned down and destroyed by the terrorist government of the Republic of Cameroon. And this is why I am present this for the United States citizens in this wonderful nation to see what is exactly going on inside the Cameroon territory. Some of the content might be Disturbing of viewers. Now the foul this general the foul. We go move we go the foul for a town. You can see those are grandmothers. Those are grandmothers, as you see. That's their life, that's their spirit. Some of their homes have been burned down by the terrorist government of the Republic military that are currently terrorizing our people. Why must we have to live with that Republic? That's the big, the million question. Why must we have to live with that Republic? Because the British government brought us into this mess and we are in a survival mode. And that is why we must fight, we must fight, and we must defend our sovereignty that we do not, in any circumstances, need Lankali to be part of our territory. Those are grandmothers, they're speaking in their local language, in the forest. You can listen.
training held in Popodi Yulaso, Burkina Faso's second largest city. Soldiers from a Cameroonian elite battalion confront would be terrorists. It's a simulated attack designed to be similar to what the West African armies are likely to encounter on the battlefield. On the 7th of June this year, the Guardian newspaper ran a special feature. That is the British that are debating about the, the case of the Southern Cameroon. But unfortunately, one will expect the British government to immediately come up and say, okay, we made an error, we recognize the people of Southern Cameroon, and we will stand with the people of Southern Cameroon. Of course, when you see, she, when she spoke, of course, the, the house is empty, because when it comes to, in terms of speaking about the issues affecting the people of Southern Cameroon, it's none of their concern. Because the error they did, they knew what they were doing. And now our people, we have lost thousands of our souls in Southern Cameroon territory. Because the British government brought us into this mess. Even though our people at the time, some were less educated. But unfortunately, they knew what they want for. But unfortunately, the British government didn't pay close attention. Neither to listen, they pay a deaf ear. But they saw La Republic more important, despite the relationship that is coexists between the people of Southern Cameroon and the and, and and the Nigerian Federation. And this is what the British spoke. But one will expect the Theresa May government to stood up and say, Oh, I we recognize the people of Southern Cameroon that it was our self-dignity that we failed them and that is the time we stood up and recognized what they wished for. Now United States is taking this has spearheaded because United States believe that uh, the fundamental that human dignity must be respected. But United States, I, I deeply appreciate the United States for taking head, for taking spearheading. You will, even, you will even realize that the British ambassador in the neighboring country to Cameroon absolutely remains silent, has not opened a voice to talk about. The only time the British representative opened a voice when they were debating the natural gas deal. The natural gas deal. That is when the British ambassador was able to open his mouth and talk about the issues. I am so appreciative of the United States government and the ambassador that has stood shoulder to shoulder and speak up in the midst of his threat of his life. But unfortunately, the British government that actually brought us into this mess abdominately remained silent, including Theresa May's government. And that is why the, the government secretary in which she will be analyzing said they will create jobs. Why our people, the one that I just shown, are languishing in the forest, more than using trees, leaves, for their sanitation? Why British are interested on the natural gas deal? Let's listen to their own one of their representatives speaking openly, and one will expect them to come up and say no. But unfortunately, it is not of their business. But unfortunately, I can assure you, our people back in Ground Zero, that our sovereignty and our dignity is non negotiable. On the brutal campaign Let's listen. Plans by the regime of Cameroon's President Bia against English speaking communities in the west of the country, which were formerly known as British Cameroon, communities to whom we owe a historic responsibility. Absolutely. They quoted in The Guardian. The ordinary men and women who saw their villages attacked by Beers military, who saw their neighbours and families members killed, and that they were forced to flee for their lives. They quoted the charity workers who were looking after thousands of displaced women and children for whom they warned going home would be suicide. Now, by any normal moral standard, you would expect the UK government to read those reports and be appalled. That is not me speaking. That is not me. That is a British representative speaking his open mind exactly what is in the in, in what the British government.
government should have been doing. We are in this mess. We are in this mess because of the UK government. Because they ignore the fundamental value that our people have the dignity to govern themselves. And they shouldn't have got into this mess that our grandmother are living in the midst of the forest. Because the British government choose this horrendous mess that we are experiencing. Let's listen to the British spokesperson. But not this government. The very next day after that report was published, the British Trade Secretary announced a 1.5 billion... Yes, that is true. After the, after the Guardian report about their regime, the British Trade Secretary announced a 1.5 billion US dollar deal with this terrorist government that is terrorizing our people. And the Under Secretary or the Secretary in the British government has the audacity to claim that they have a they have a deal to sign with the terrorist individual, the mentally deranged Pobia, whose wife is now the president. And he is languishing somewhere in the toilet. One will expect the British government to stood up. I am so glad that the United States is standing. Just imagine that the United States wasn't open her United States would have remained silent. This is the post, this is the United Nations document that specifies that the people of Southern Cameroon are not a colonial territory. And the public should have asked. The simple is clear. The world, this is what the world body should have been doing. Tell the land public, vacate the territory and rebuild the people of Southern Cameroon. We are capable. We can support the, any government in Southern Cameroon. And they stand for the myth and the truth of the people of Southern Cameroon. We do not need the public to tell us what we should and shouldn't do. I expect the British government to stand up for obligation and do the right thing and do the right thing. That is what the British government should have been doing. That is what the British government should have been doing. Let's listen to... ...and deal with a British national gas company and President Bayer's regime. A deal which, in the words of the Trade Department's press release, will, quote, generate a huge stream of revenue for Cameroon's public treasury. In other words, we have a regime ranked as the 25th most corrupt in the world, a ruler... The 25th, in the, the most corrupt in the world. The 25th, the, the most corrupt in the world. ...over $200 million engaged in a systematic campaign of brut brutality and killings against English-speaking community in his country all the government can do is boast of doing trade deals which will only enrich him further. That, in my mind, is what this government means by global Britain. Bonjour, bonjour mes frères, bonjour mes frères. to another British respond again. Let's listen. Uh, I'll, I'll try not to uh, uh, repeat any of the very uh, clear and passionate Let's listen. points made by the noble Lord Lord Botang about the current situation and the recent developments uh, uh, in the Cameroon. Uh, suffice to say that I fully support his call for uh, UK engagement uh, in this situation, not least because of our historical responsibilities uh, for the actions in 1961, uh, and also I think a degree of abandonment thereafter when the federal system was... You listen to what he said, the degree of abandonment. That is absolutely what the British government did in 1960. He does quote exactly what the British government did. In 1961, despite the vote at the United Nations, despite the vote at the United Nations, the British abandoned what they had stood up several years 
and the British administrator at the British uh, in in Enugu House of Assembly in Nigeria. And after what had happened, now they abandoned the people of Southern Cameroon and choose a a goodwill gesture for the La Republic. And that is why our mother and children are being burned down each day and being homes are destroyed, property wasted, because the British government in 1961 forced us into this mess that our people are experiencing. Let's listen to Uh, but I wanted to add uh, uh, four, four points, uh, if I could do that briefly, um, to the discussion this evening. The first is that I think uh, here, while there is a role for the United Kingdom, there also has to be a role for the African Union. Uh, many of us have welcomed over the years the shift uh, in the African Union from the old policy of non-interference and in the uh, practices of the governments of the member states of the old Afri uh, uh, organization of African unity to the new policy of non-indifference in the African Union where there is a more interventionist, at least in theory, approach uh, to these kinds of situations. And it does seem to me that where there has been success over recent years uh, in tackling human rights abuses, the potential for atrocities uh, and, and the prevention of atrocities, then it has been where the region and the continent uh, have been more, act, more actively engaged uh, than the international uh, community. The second point I wanted to make is that I think here there is yet another lesson for uh, the uh, ambitions that the government claims to have in relation to a global Britain post-Brexit. If we are to increase our resources in the Foreign Office and if we are uh, to have a more active international uh, um, uh, policy, then uh, I believe it has to have human rights and atrocity prevention at its core. We have that responsibility in the UN Security Council, but we also have it as a nation, given our historical responsibilities uh, for our colonial past. And I believe that the uh, government must ensure that human rights and atrocity prevention are at the heart of the new social politics of this situation. Uh, we'll, and, and I want to generalise here, be far beyond the Cameroon, in most cases rightly, feels persecuted and disadvantaged by the majority and where the majority so i i have a this video i know i posted it on my facebook and whatever but it that give you the impression that even though the united uk member of the house of common are speaking one will expect the active government of Theresa may will obviously engage but unfortunately she doesn't even know what is supposed to be done. And that is why our brothers and sisters, why they are more concentrated in the oil and gas deal. Yes, they are resident, they are concentrated on the oil and gas deal. Why our mother and children are languishing in the forest, in the midst of atrocity and the behavior of a mentally deranged individual called Pobia, who is being supported by the French government. I always like the encouragement he spoke. Your, your determination and your commitment to regain your freedom. The world is watching you in silent admiration. From the night watchman to the teacher, the clergy and the church, from the puff puff woman and mankon to the bamba bay and fiango, you have all stood up as one person against oppression to affirm your dignity to assert your rights, and to restore your lost sovereignty as a nation. It's the first step to building a new, bright, and prosperous future for yourselves and for your children. There's no turning back. It will not serve you well to make short-sighted compromises now. You've bought a one-way ticket home to Boya. You one day got the message and is panicked that you will never again accept second-class citizenship. That is 
the United Nations vote. That is the United Nations vote that was conducted here in the United States. It's not elsewhere. It was conducted here in the United States, here in New York, not elsewhere. That was the result of the vote that 64 nations stood and recognized the people of Southern Cameroon as a people of distinctive nations. And the similar body in 1960, in the first of Je in January 1960, voted to recognize La Republic as a distinctive nation. Those are one single body that voted to recognize two identical nations. But La Republic is massacring our people, and massacring our people, slaughtering our people, burn home as the images that show. It's disturbing. Why? Why? Why can our people be a distinctive nation? Why can they be alone? Why must they be managed by a foreign government that they have their own independence in 1960? As in 1961. Why must we live under their umbrella? That is the million question that one is asking. That is the simple. The people want to be left alone. That is all. That is all. That is all the world needs to acknowledge. The people of Southern Cameroon wants to be left alone. That is all they need. You can drivel all every philosophy, every preach, every gospel, whatever you can talk about, everything. But it boils down to one single philosophy the people want to be left alone. They do not want to be under the umbrella of the Republic. That is what the people want. And that is what they stood for. The world can beat the forest, beat the bush, and drivel every round. They will come down to one point. Let the people of Southern Cameroon remain as a sovereign, sovereign nations. That is all. You can travel, you can visit, you can spot, you no matter whatever you can do. But the people avoid that one thing. The people boil down to one and the one thing. They want to be left alone. That is all the people need. A sovereign distinctive nations. The love of their independence. That is it. Yes, I am in live broadcast. You can watch, you can watch the our populations. You can watch. This is, these are young children of Southern Cameroon that are continuing massacre each day, each month, each year. Those are children. They haven't seen the pinnacle of their life. Those are children of Southern Cameroon that are massacred each day, each month. Yesterday was in Barfoot that at least 10 children were massacred by the public currently invasion of Southern Cameroon territory. This is just a series. This is just a series of murder young children by someone that is 86 years old, 86 or 87 years now, and mentally deranged. But the life of these young children that you see here are more fundamentally needed than an 86 years old that is gone. He has enjoyed part of his rest of his life. Whereas these young children, they haven't reached a pinnacle of their life. But unfortunately, they have been massacred by a terrorist military of the Republic that is currently invading Southern Cameroon territory. That is the world that the world want to collaborate, want to associate with them. I think the people has matured enough to be able to govern themselves. They do not need the Republic to tell them what they should and shouldn't do. And that is why I am bringing this attention to the world community to see that the, the people of Southern Cameroon need their own sovereign identity. They need a nation, they need to respect, they need a government that represents them. They do not need the Republic to tell them what they should and shouldn't do. This is the sons and daughters 
of our beloved Southern Cameroon territory. That is the Southern Cameroon police bash. I have it on my Facebook. That is the Southern Cameroon police bash. When they travel to any good house of assembly in Nigeria, they have their own police. Like the Nigerian authority never came and asked what should be had the government. No, the Nigerian recognized them that they have their own police force that able to maintain their security. But when La Republic came, they detoned every of our property, every of our wealth, every of our financial institution. The British government knew that we were surplus. The British government were provide subvention to the territory that joined Nigeria in the north. But they never provide subvention to the people of South Cameroon because our people with the managerial skill were able to have sufficient enough to provide for their own people. But when the La Republic, the terrorist government of La Republic came and made, drained our resources, frustrated our people, closed all our financial institutions, closed all our road network, and closed our electricity electricity supply network and now our people are not living on hand to mouth why does the world think that we can survive but i can assure the world that our people can survive with that republic our people can survive <clears throat> that our people that are continue to be burned down by the terrorist government of La Republic. That's our people that are continuing to be burned down into, as you see on those images. Those are our people, the people of Southern Cameroon, that are continuing to be destroyed by the terrorist government of La Republic that is currently invading Southern Cameroon. As you can watch, that is the United Nations delegations. That is the United Nations delegations that present to the Republic two identical map that they still recognize that there are two nations they recognize and one will expect them to immediately inform them in a we do not recognize and that the people want to leave their room why can we be governed ourselves that is the billion question why can the people of Saudi Cameroon be governed themselves? Why must La Republic be the de facto to tell the people of Saudi Cameroon what they should do? That is the million question. That is what I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why? 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 That is the million question that I can't. That is a million question. I don't get it, and nobody get it, and everyone doesn't get it. Why must they live under the umbrella of La Republic? That is a billion question that I don't get it. That is a million question that I don't get it. That is a million question I don't get it. That is a map, that is a distinctive map that belongs to the people of Southern Cameroon. The United States should be dealing with a transition period. The British government should be doing a transition period that La Republic, they start immediately disembarkation, official suppression. That is the, what the people want. Let La Republic go and let the people of Southern Cameroon leave and the people will leave their enjoyable life and govern their nation they are capable their leadership they do not need how the public should be telling the united states should stand and say this is what the people are looking forward all those negotiations going by this going by is not going to lead to nowhere the philosophy is separation that is what the united states should stood for and say the people wants to go the people wants to go that is all the people want to live on their own Yes, the people want to live on their own. That is it. That is the map. You can see. You can see the life, how they live, how they terrorize our people in the forest, burn them, kill them as just like an animal. And they can sit in the midst and show that they are vagabonds. 
they show their vagabond. Fellow brothers and sisters, I can assure you, we are at war. The war is continuing, and that we shall never relinquish the war, and that we must stand till the Republic vacate our territory. We have got enough. The past 56 years has been a rubbish. And this is the moment that we must stand and stand for good. Yes, we must stand for good. That is our brother. Yes, that is our brother that is being burned out with his clothes. That is our brother. For those that claim that they are the one federal state. I think there are some people that are mentally deranged. I will expect them to be more civil. They have been fighting for the past 56 years with a terrorist individual and they will have the audacity. Why can't we live independent? Why must we live with the Republic? If other nations did survive in the midst of atrocity and they are sovereign nations, They've been destroyed. Nation being destroyed. And yet they rise and stand as a distinctive nation. Why can't the people of Saudi Cameroon also rise and stand as a distinctive nation? Why must they be under an umbrella of another nation? That is a million question that I ask many of you. The people of Saudi Cameroon has risen and that we are not negotiable and we let the world understand that we are not negotiable we ask land public to pack their luggage and move to land public that is that is a fundamental clear quest clear point land public degage and go move to your territory our people this is our son this is our brothers this is our children that have been burnt indiscriminately You can watch. You can watch. Those are our fellow brothers and sisters. Those are them that are burnt alive. Burnt alive by the terrorist military of La Republic. And they want us to be federate. Federate. Federation with them. Yes. Yes. We should federate with them. I'm sure you Imagine you watching and seeing yourself burn down like this in these horrific images and you want to federate with the Republic. Yes, I am sure there are people that are incomprehensible, that their judgment is absolutely a disgust, that you want to federate with them. I think that nightmare has come and gone. That our people must be let go. Yes. Those at home. I, I, I can imagine my mom and my dad. When they were living in this kind of a herd. And that this is the way they were living. My dad probably has spent. My dad is of late anyway. So but imagine my dad has managed in 30 years of his life. Managing to survive and able to build this and left this for my mom to live in. And when I came and I found La Republic, burned this hurt that I grew up and you expect me to be embraced La Republic for God, for Christ's sake. Yes. I am sure you too have the same experience that this is where you were born. This is where you grew up. This is the a memory for you and that La Republic military burnt it burnt the homes and and our brothers and some individuals are still asking that we should be federal I am sure the world must have a mindset that is troublesome to ask us to live with them again why can't we live alone why if we have to stay alone and live on piece of rotten banana, rotten fruit, till we can be able to stand our feet, I think it's preferable than to go and have 
this land public that in a subsequent year we will be back to the same square one we have better leave alone yes you can watch you can watch this is a young man this is a young man he has struggled in the rest of his life you don't know how he managed to generate a little he could and probably that's what he lives with and you can imagine look at him he might probably just come in from a farm and just to discover that his home has been burned down by the terrorist military of la republic de cameroon i am sure you must have the same painful feeling i am sure that you have the same painful feeling as well just as this young man stand frustrated and believe that we here in the diaspora standing here and speak up unto the world community to understand that our people deserve something better and that they deserve a government that is accountable to them I can imagine this dad. I can imagine this dad. This is him. He stand in a. Um, he stand frustrated. He stand in. I mean, I I I don't have words to describe him. After his little hurt that he may have struggled for thirty years to build this, and he found himself in this format because. The terrorist government of the Republic burned their home. And I will imagine that a military in Saudi Cameroon, that it is a military of Saudi Cameroon, that's supposed to protect the indigenous citizens, choose to burn the home, then that military must be executed the same day in Saudi Cameroon. That will be the government that I shall advocate. That will be the government I stand for. That the military must protect the indigenous and not be the trouble of their lives. If I am living in South Cameroon and I found this, that, that military, the entire military will be crushed down and burnt into ashes. Because that is not the duty of a civilized society. That the military is using homes and burn them. And people are asking that we should federate with them. Yes, we should federate with them. We should. You can imagine, you can imagine this dad in this format. You imagine, that is him. That is him. He, he can't even get up. He can't, he can't, he, he can't absolutely even get up where he's sitting. He depends on his children to help him to his location where he is. But his home has been burned down and he can't even move. I mean, it is quite painful and watching this and you are sitting and telling me that we should federate with the republic of course we are we should why cannot people govern themselves look i'm sure you are seeing this you can watch this dad his pair of shoes are in different color, which means he's barely half his life going. He's barely half his life going. He doesn't even know what he's going to eat the next day. But he is fortunate because the lorry he has gathered for his lifetime and built a little hut has been burned down by La Republic du Cameroon. I am sure you feel the pain just as I'm feeling it, as I watch these horrific images that is perpetrated by the Republic terrorist government in the Southern Cameroon Territory. Fellow brothers and sisters, we are at war. For those who don't know, we are at war. We are at war with the Republic. If we can sacrifice our lives and protect our own dad that we left behind, then that is the most important thing we can do for ourselves.
you can watch how mother and children they just gather and see their home their family home their family home yes their family home has been destroyed by the terrorist government of La Republic and that the United States want us to federate with them and the United Nations wants us to federate with them how the world community want us to federate with them why can we live alone that is the million questions and I will continue to persuade this and I will be traveling to the US Congress the State Department and all these images shall be presented there look forward for my subsequent video thank all of you and this is been a this devastating moment in my lifetime but my southern cameroon ambazonia will must be free and not on the terms of la republic watch me but la republic is on the wrong side of the game i want to take a moment to thank all of you for watching this is Fulton daniel speaking here from the great state of texas here in the united states